Okay, so I came across this uh, clip on a uh, Chinese railgun. I knew they were making an electromagnetic railgun, but um, that was no news to me. But uh, in the middle of this clip, there's another piece of information I didn't know about. So what I'll do is I'll play this clip, and in the middle, I'll, uh, I'll stop it and we'll talk about uh, another development that's just happened. That's not what you normally see on your feed. Pics of a Chinese naval ship carrying what appears to be an electromagnetic railgun. But if what popped up on social media in China is legit, it means they've won the race to perfect these next-gen weapons. No need to freak out, yeah? Here it is, a blurry pic of what appears to be the world's first naval electromagnetic railgun. But not to worry, electromagnetic railguns can only propel a projectile at five times the speed of sound and successfully hit a target 200 k's away. The railgun unlike conventional weapons doesn't use any propellant in terms of gunpowder or high explosives and it can propel a projectile much faster than traditional uh, explosive weapons. The US has been trying to develop its own railgun since 2005. Burr. But it's still years away from being operational. Meanwhile it's believed China's gun has existed since 2011. Photos of a prototype leaked on social media early last year. It just changes the game um, in terms of weaponry at sea. I think China is um, setting the bar at a new level. China's rapidly modernised its military in recent years, flexing its muscles by laying claim to the South China Sea, a critically important maritime trade channel in Asia. Almost $5 trillion of trade passes through annually, including half of Australia's iron ore, coal and LNG exports. The United States domestic policy seems a bit chaotic and its international policy is all over the place. It doesn't really have the clarity of vision or of purpose to check China. Two weeks ago, a Chinese rear admiral threatened to sink two US supercarriers, saying what the United States fears most is taking casualties. It's Okay, so that, that's a bit of information I didn't know about, that um, a Chinese admiral has been threatening to uh, take out uh, two uh, US supercarriers. So I had a look online and I came up with this. So we've got this, um, well actually I'll clarify this. If you look down, I was reading through, if you look down, he's not actually a, a um, he's just a rear admiral, he's deputy head of the Chinese Academy of Military Sciences. So he's sort of like a, a more of an academic um, admiral, he's not a uh, he's not a serving admiral. So, so well, I think it says here somewhere he's not a serving admiral. But um, I'll put a link to this in the description because it's quite interesting. Well, it's quite terrifying actually. Um, uh, anyway, it says there somewhere that he's he's not an actual uh, military admiral. I don't know where he got his title from, but uh, so let's have a look here. But um, bottom line is he, they're saying that um, uh, in his speech he said there's five cornerstones of the United States open to exploitation, their military, their money, their talent, their voting system. So, you know, I, I think I said this in one of my other videos, thinking about Russia and manipulating the uh, voting system, it'd, it'd be China that's trying to uh, uh, manipulate the system and get, the, get ahead. Uh, and their fear of adversaries. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Admiral Lau, is it Lu Lau, I'd say it is, who holds an academic military rank, not a service role, said so China should use its strength to attack the enemy's shortcomings, attack wherever the enemy is afraid of being hit, wherever the enemy is weak. So uh, China, uh, boy oh boy, I've been, I've been talking about China and I don't really talk about China too much on, uh, on YouTube because YouTube is a bit touchy on controversial subjects and you know, advertiser-friendly content, all that sort of thing, which um, I find worrying in itself because that's that's a form of censorship, and we shouldn't we shouldn't have censorship. I think um, PewDiePie didn't get into the um, the uh, 2018 roundup because he he's uh, touches on controversial subjects, and uh, I don't think YouTube like that because he's very he's very influential. He's got about almost 80 million subscribers now. So anyway, let's, moving on here. Um, they're basically this, this admiral saying that you know the ongoing disputes over the ownership of the East and South China Seas could be resolved by sinking two U.S. supercarriers. Now that's that is a huge claim. That that would that would create uh, World War Three basically. 
that's a huge claim and um, meanwhile everyone's just rabbiting on about Trump and any little slip up or stupid thing he says on Twitter and this this actually slipped past me and I'm pretty I'm pretty vigilant with my news and so if it slipped past me and I was probably down the beach <laughs> I was probably down the beach today and it slipped past me I, I didn't see this but that is absolutely it's it's just uh, terrifying that's for a, for a um, Chinese official to say this sort of thing saying that we you know we should just take down a couple of the American uh, aircraft carriers and uh, kill 10,000 American uh, military personnel just you know just say so, you know the US backs off and he was also saying about Taiwan here if the US naval fleet dares to stop in Taiwan it is time for the People's Liberation Army to deploy troops to promote national unity on invade the island Admiral Lau said. So um, th this is in line with um, let's just click these stupid ads off. Uh, this is in line with you know the president Xi, uh, Xi Jinping. He um, he was saying the same thing that the uh, unit reunification of uh, Taiwan is inevitable. That's what his words were. So you can see that uh, China's not uh, not content in just being uh, the provider of our cheap uh, cheap labour for our for our for our materialistic lifestyle, they want to take a military role as well. And I've been warning about this for years. You know, probably 99.9% .9 of you aren't, uh, followers on on my Facebook. I I don't really have that many Facebook friends. I don't like to uh, uh, you know, get get too controversial on my Facebook. But I do do a lot of things on China on my Facebook. And you know I get called racist, and once I get called racist, I usually just uh, delete the person because uh, they just don't want to hear my logic. And you know I'm I'm just getting sick of being correct. Actually, I'm always correct about these things. I warned about China many many years ago when I first started being on Facebook, and uh, it's all coming to a fruition here. That um, I said we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, we should be opposing globalization because. Uh, China's just going to rise up, and here we go, it's happening. So let's get back to the video. Let's get back to the video. Actually, uh, we've got a bit more on there. So they're basically, let's go back a few seconds. And here we go. What the United States fears most is taking casualties. It's very unlikely that China will want to use force because that would actually destroy uh, its economic uh, possibilities. The old saying is, walk quietly but carry a big stick. I think that's what the China's doing at the moment. So it sounds like we might be safe for now, meaning hopefully the only rail gun that'll ever be fired is Arnie's. So if we're told they're unlikely to use it, should we be comforted by that at all? Is it cold comfort? Are you happy with that? Is that no, enough for you? I mean, no, it's not. Knowing they've got it, yeah. isn't that concern enough? Well, the reason you, you have a weapon is for the potential of using it, right? I mean, America's got nuclear weapons. doesn't mean that they necessarily want to use them, but it affects the whole politics of the region. Right? Um, and so that's clearly what China's trying to do now, is manoeuvre into a situation where it's the carrot stick thing. But right. the question that's always been around China is, as it rises, is it really just going to be an economic power and only have economic interests, or is it going to seek to become a military power? That starts to look like their intentions are pretty clear. Is it now taking its moment as well because the old superpowers of the US and the UK are now more caught up with their own domestic issues mm. and they're not, uh, you know, they're taking a back step from, from uh, global events? You know, is China like sneaking in there? Well, I don't know. They've been building that weapon for a long time, so clearly they weren't waiting for Donald Trump, and I don't think they predicted Trump was going to be president or anything. <laughs> no. So I don't think it's that, but, but yeah, like as the United States starts to retreat, and part of Trump's America First thing is retreating from the international the the stage, world. that's what you invite. Oh, God. Okay, so I'll have to comment on Waleed. He's usually very anti-Trump, and he's, he's basically just doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, Trump isn't retreating from international politics he wants to. He wants a protectionist uh, system where he's um, protecting uh, American manufacturing. And he wants to bring manufacturing back to America. It's happening in in uh, Germany. They're bringing back uh, manufacturing to Germany through automation and also smaller batch sizes. And um, 
Trump wants to do that as well with America. It's nothing to do with, as you saw in Syria, he had no qualms about uh, sending some uh, aircraft over in Syria, you know, and um, uh, against uh, Assad. So I, I don't think, um, you know, he's in, in North Korea. Yeah, he's not stepping back. He's not stepping back from any international politics as well. So. Well, Eddie always likes to twist. He likes to twist things into little Waleed's little anti-Trump narrative. But uh, it's people like myself who will call him out because he really doesn't know what he's talking about. He can't. You know, he's, he's very passive-aggressive, and um, some of the things I agree with. But you know, when he when he sort of uh, loses loses logic and reason and starts turning everything into an anti-Trump narrative, it's just. I just lose all respect for him, you know. Keep, keep, you know, keep it logical. There's things I don't like about Donald Trump either, and I'm freely admit that. And I'll call, I'll call Donald Trump out on things too that I don't like. But um, to be so one-eyed and just anything Trump does is bad is just ridiculous. There's some good things about Trump and there's some bad things about Trump as well. And um, I think we'll leave it at that. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't say people who enjoyed that segment it's uh, it's a bit of a worry in fact it's quite a bit of a worry and um i think if uh if anyone was was uh, willing to use weapons i think it would be china as you see with tiananmen square they're willing to just run over their own people with um with military tanks and um so i don't think i have any qualms about uh sinking a couple of u.s uh, supercarriers that's just my thoughts so I think it's gone too far. Um, I don't think China's going to be reeled back, so we'll have to deal with them. But um, I can't. I can't see it ending ending too well. That's just my opinion. But uh, tell me what you think. Uh, leave your comments below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Cheers.